bum, bum, da 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 bum, bum, da. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back or to the Roomies Digest. My name's Christine and if you clicked on this video, you know today we're gonna be doing a very fun and exciting new series on this channel. I am going to be asking creators from BookTube, BookTok, and Bookstagram to give me their recs and then I rate them via the Copile method. So the Copile method is a very straightforward way of rating books and I thought that this would be probably the most fair way to rate like like the books that I'm gonna be reading for these vlogs because at the end of the vlog, I'm gonna have to decide which bookish creator gave me the best rec. Now the call pile method is basically just rating it based off of characters, atmosphere, writing, plot, intrigue, logic, and entertainment. So once those things are averaged out, that is what the book is rated. So essentially the creator that has the highest number wins the round and gets a point for their platform. At the end of the year, there will be 12 different platforms or like winners of each month and the platform that has the most uh, points, I guess, by the end of the year, they win and officially have given the best recs this year. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of pressure, but it's really all fun and games, and it gives me a chance to be able to collaborate with some friends and also make new friends and kind of just hang out with people that I don't normally talk to on the day to day because I definitely wanted to do something fun on this channel where I was actually collabing with different creators, and I definitely wanted to do it across all platforms because if you guys don't know, me and Monique make content for literally BookTok, Bookstagram, BookTube. We almost did a Pinterest one time, but I wanted to be able to kind of give you guys a better look at some creators that you might not know about and get to know some of their best recs. The fun part for me is to not only be able to read these really great and amazing books and like see what um, these creators' favorite books are, but also I get to try and guess what they're going to recommend me for the month, okay? So I will just be reading like one book from each person, so three books total. And I did ask these creators to send me a video with their recommendation. So I'm very, very excited to see what they recommended me. Each month is going to be a different genre. And the only way that I tried to make this as fair as possible was picking creators that I know generally read a specific genre the most. Like if they were gonna recommend their favorite book, they would recommend a book from this genre, if that makes sense. So like if it was me, I would recommend you an adult fantasy book, okay? Because that's my favorite genre. Or maybe an adult fantasy romance to be determined. In today's video, I chose creators that I thought would pick from the YA genre. Okay, it isn't necessarily YA fantasy. It isn't necessarily like YA contemporary. I just know that these creators read a lot of YA books and I wanted to start off real simple. Okay, like real chill. Okay, so I think, I think that they are gonna be recommending me YA books and I'm so excited to watch these videos to see if I'm right because my, my little like competitiveness against myself, I guess, is thriving right now. So the three creators that I chose for this first round are Darian from Darian Reads, who's gonna be representing BookTube, Basma from Bookish Basma, who will be representing Bookstagram, and Jenna from Jenna's Lit Picks, who will be representing BookTok. I am so, so, so excited. And obviously all these creators have other platforms, you know, they don't just do this one thing, but the way that I kind of decided this was where did I first kind of like recognize this person? Where did I first kind of meet them? Where did I first come across their content? Um, and that is best represented by the platform that they are representing today. Now, like I said, I know these creators don't exclusively read YA, but I have a feeling in my bones that they are gonna be recommending me some great YA books. So I'm really excited. Unless they do try and go with recommendations that are my taste, then it might not be YA. I don't know. I'm not sure. I gave them a list of all the books that I still want to read, all the books that I have read. And so hopefully that worked. Okay, so the first video that we're gonna be watching today is Darian from Darian Reads. This is my good buddy, I love her so much, and I already know that she is probably gonna recommend me Strange the Dreamer. She literally 
always tells me to read this book and I don't know why I haven't yet. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a little intimidating, but I can guarantee that this is the book that Darian is going to tell me to read. She's always trying to get me to put it into the like fantasy series drawing, which is the fantasy book club that I host with a couple of other friends. And that's really my guess. Like, I don't know what else she could possibly recommend me unless it was something like that has to do with Alice Oseman. Like it could be like a curveball and it could be something like Heartstopper, but I think I've read her favorite Alice Oseman or the one that I think she would recommend me. So let's see what she actually recommended me. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for including me in this series. I am so excited about it, and I am very honored to represent BookTube in this round. So the book that I'm going to recommend to you, I don't think you're going to guess it because I don't think I've mentioned it much on my channel yet. It's a book I read very recently, but it's one of my favorite books that I read this year, and I just have a feeling that you're really going to like it. What? So we'll see. But the book is called The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. It came out this year. It was nominated <gasps> for a couple of Goodreads Choice Awards. It did not win. Oh! Very devastating, but whatever. So this is a like light science fiction book, and it takes place in like this dystopian... Dystopian? It takes place in an alternate world, I guess. Um, and basically everybody wakes up one day and everyone in the world has received this little box. No one knows where it came from. Inside the box is a piece of string and everyone's strings are different lengths and they end up figuring out that the length of the, your, the length of your string determines how long your life is. So you're following eight different characters and you know, talking about their strings, if they decide to look at their strings, and how basically this affects the world going forward, as well as these individuals' lives. So it's very interesting, and I think you're really gonna like it. I thought it was so good, so I'm very excited for you to read it and to know your thoughts, and I feel very confident that you're gonna like it. So yeah, thank you so much again for including me. I love you very much, and happy reading! <laughs> Wait, wait, that was not what I expected at all. Oh my gosh, I have to look up this book. Okay, The Measure. Wow, not me being like, oh, I think she's totally gonna do Strange the Dreamer. That's so crazy. Darian, Darian, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> How many times have we talked about Strange the Dreamer? I'm literally, my face hurts from like smiling so much. Okay, Nikki Elric, The Measure. First of all, the cover, oh, I have seen this. I have seen this. Okay, the cover is stunning. First of all, the premise sounds really freaking good. What I wanna know is, it's probably an adult book, isn't it? <laughs> it sounds really good. I'm really excited. I definitely don't own this book, which I probably should have prefaced that at the beginning of this. Because I'm doing the Broke Bitches Book Buying Ban, I will have to make sure that I do have three books available in case I need to buy the books for these vlogs. But thankfully I have a Barnes & Noble gift card, so I will be going there later today with Monique because I do have a couple of other books that literally came out today that I've got to pick up. So I will just pick this up when I go to Barnes & Noble. But it does look like it's an adult science fiction novel. Okay, okay, just crazy. All right, we'll leave it to Darian to throw a curveball. So now I'm thinking maybe everybody recommended me books based on my taste. All right, that doesn't change what I think the other two are gonna recommend me, okay? So let's just, let's just keep going. Okay, so the second video is gonna be from Basma, who I think is going to recommend me, what is the book called? It's called As Long As the Lemon Trees Grow, okay? Basma has been talking about this book, I wanna say all the year last year, like just on it, on it, on it, okay? And I mean, I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't interested in this book because I, recently got it from the bookstore. Like it literally looks so good. I think the story is very like touching um, and very heartfelt and it's very dramatic. Like I think it's definitely like a YA. I don't even know if it's contemporary cause like I think some stuff goes on. I think there's like a war going on. Anyway, let's see what Basma recommends me. If it's not what I think it is, I'm a horrible guesser. We already know that. Okay, so here we go. 
I'm Vespa from Bookish Vespa. I usually read young adult fantasy, sci-fi, and romance. Also some middle grade Percy Jackson. Um, my recommendation is going to be Thorn by Ansel Kanani. You can see it right up there. The reason I recommend this book is a fantastic young adult fantasy in a diverse world and main characters who will not disappoint. You don't want to miss this series. I'm shocked. Okay, what are we learning first of all? Like, I cannot guess anything to save my life, okay? Whew, wow, okay, Thorn. Thorn I don't own either, so shocker. I'm gonna have to buy some books today at Barnes & Noble. Okay, Thorn. I don't even know if I've ever heard of that book. I will say the one thing Basma knows, like some good characters. Thorn, Dauntless Path, number one, by Intisar Ken. Ani. That's what she said. Kanani. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. What is this even about? Okay, a princess with two futures, a destiny all their own between her cruel family and the contempt she faces at court. Princess Alira? Alira. Alira? Has always longed to escape the confines of her royal life, but when she's betrothed to the powerful prince Kestrin, Alira embarks on a journey to his land with little hope for a better future. When a mysterious and terrifying sorceress robs Alira of both her identity and her role as a princess, she seizes the opportunity to start a new life for herself as a goose girl. This must be a retelling because I think that's an old folk tale. When Alira soon finds that Kestrin is not what she expected, the more Alira learns of this new kingdom, the pain and suffering its people endure, as well as the danger facing Kestrin from the sorceress herself, the more she knows she can't remain the goose girl forever. With the fate of the kingdom at stake, Alira is caught between two worlds and ultimately must decide who she is and what she stands for. It includes The Bone Knife, a bonus short story. Okay, that was, that was the end of it. Looks good. The rating on Goodreads for this one is a four stars. I didn't even look at the measure. Okay, that one is a four stars. The measure, a 4.1. Ooh, these are close. Okay, all right, Basma, we'll do it. We're getting it today, so let's see how it goes. So the next video is gonna be from Jenna. Jenna is a little bit of a wild card. She's probably the person I know the least from this group, but I want to know her better. Like, I wanna be friends with her, you know what I mean? But based on kind of like what I've seen on Book Talk and what I've seen her recommend, what I've seen her read, I know she definitely reads fantasy. I know she definitely reads YA fantasy. So if I had to guess what she was going to tell me to read, okay? I think my first guess, and this is embarrassing because I should have already read this book by now, but my first guess would be Beasts of Ruin. Yes. I loved Beasts of Prey, but I, for some reason, like did not have time to pick up Beasts of Ruin. Not that I didn't have time. I didn't make time to pick up Beasts of Ruin. So I really should have done that, but that's the one that I think, that I think she would recommend me, okay? If not that though, I would say Bloodmarked or what is the one called? A Song of Storms and Silence, because I also should have already read that book. Let's be honest, I already should have read that book. So based off the source material, that's what I think she's going to be recommending me. Let's see if I can guess anything correctly this round. Here we go. Hi, Christine. It's Jenna here from Jenna's Lit Picks. I want to just say thank you so, so much for including me in this really cool challenge. I'm very happy to be representing um, TikTok and Book Talk. And I also hope that I pick a book that you are going to enjoy. I'm going to be honest, this was a little bit difficult, although I think some of our tastes can be really similar. You, like me, dabble in various genres, and so I have a lot to work with, but I'm pretty satisfied with um, the one I picked. So, drum roll. Okay, I picked Son of the Storm by Tim Davis Kumpel, a book that I recently read, I absolutely fell in love with, and I think it's gonna be something that you enjoy. It's an epic Western African fantasy inspired novel with magic and danger and trials and a caste system that is going to need to be dismantled. <sighs> what have I learned today? What have we learned everybody? Tell me, what have we learned? Christine can't guess anything at all. Okay, Son of, the Star Son of the Storm. I've seen this at Barnes and Noble so many times and I've always been a little intimidated because I was like, what is that book? What is that book? 
and it looks good. I always pick it up and then I never end up buying it. So let's just go ahead and check it out. I'm not even sure if it's a YA. Like she said it was an epic fantasy, but like, what is it? What is it? All right, I'm seeing adult fantasy. Okay. Fiction, science fiction, high fantasy, LGBT. Ooh, we love to see it. Magic, queer, science fiction, fantasy. Wow, okay, well, you know, I can't say that I'm losing. I've got some pretty good recs here and I'm really excited to get into them because these are definitely books that I think I'm gonna like. Son of the Storm, let's see exactly what it's about. Uh, da, 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 da. In the ancient city of Basa, Don So is a clever scholar on the cusp of achieving greatness, only he doesn't want it. Instead, he prefers to chase forbidden stories about what lies outside the city walls. The Basai elite claim that there is nothing of interest. The city's immigrants are sworn to secrecy, but when Den So stumbles across a warrior wielding magic that shouldn't exist, he's put on a collision course with Basa's darkest secrets. Drawn into the city's hidden history, he sets out on a journey beyond its borders and the chaos left in the wake of his discovery threatens to destroy the empire. Oh, I actually love a story like this where the main character and pretty much all of the people in the book have been kind of like, I don't wanna say shielded because that implies somebody's like almost protecting them, but they almost have like blinders on, you know what I mean? And then suddenly something happens and the blinders come off and they, they know that everything they knew was not what it seemed to be, okay? I think that's probably one of the reasons why I loved Sword of Kaigen so much. Like it was just so, so, so good. So I'm really excited for this one because it's a sci-fi fantasy. It's like best of both worlds. And honestly, I can't lie, the cover looks amazing. Like the cover looks amazing. That's beautiful, literally. Who do you think you are? So I've got some books to buy. This is not at all what I expected, but I'm very, very excited to see which one of these ends up being the winner. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this vlog started. I think I was gonna sit here and eat Cheetos because I'm actually super hungry. Like literally, they're here. But then I was like, who wants to watch Cheeto Fingers on a vlog? Like that seems a little chaotic. So I think what I'm gonna do is make some ramen because it's really gross outside. It's actually very rainy. It's a very weird, like LA suddenly decided to become a rainy, you know, climate. So I'm gonna do that and do a couple of chores and things around the house. And then I'm gonna meet Monique at Barnes and Noble after work. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so the thing with a good ramen is having a really good base to start off with. And also, I hope you guys cannot hear the dishwasher because that's definitely, it's doing like the air dry thing. Also, the dryer is on. It is what it is. Anyway, okay, so the base that I love to start with, this is like probably my favorite ramen um, and the one that I eat the most. There are other ones, but this one today, we're gonna be going with the kimchi ramen, okay? I buy this at H Mart. It is literally the best tasting ramen as far as like the spice level and how the noodles are made. Very, very, very good. I definitely add other things into it and that's probably the other thing that makes ramen so good when you make it yourself at home. Cause obviously if you just make it with like the broth and the noodles, like that's fine, but like you need you need a little something else. Like you need a little fried egg in there or some seaweed or, you know, some kimchi or whatever. So figure out what you like to eat in your ramen and then go from there. Usually I definitely do some sort of like veggie, like I'll do kale, spinach, uh, seaweed, like some kind of green. I'll usually do kimchi because I love kimchi. Like I have the industrial bop thing. I'll just show you guys. It's like the kimchi that, house families would use yet this is literally what i eat this is the best tasting one that i've had besides if it's homemade kimchi obviously it's gonna be a lot better but i like this one it definitely is tasty definitely lasts and then i either do like a meat and an egg because i'm crazy or i'll just do like an egg like today i don't have any meat ready to be made. So I'm just gonna be doing like a fried egg with mine, especially since it's like lunchtime and I don't really need to be eating that much anyway. So yeah, so today I'm gonna basically be making mine with seaweed, which if you guys are getting seaweed out of a packet, you definitely wanna make sure that it is like sitting in water for at least like 30 minutes before you make it. But essentially the seaweed's super easy. You can just stir fry it. And today I'm gonna be putting it in some like toasted sesame oil. I don't know, yeah. 
toasted sesame oil you know it's already salty so you don't really have to add that much more to it and then i will be making the noodles putting some kimchi in there and the fried egg so that's gonna be my ramen for today i'm not gonna take you guys through like the making process because i'm pretty sure that this vlog is gonna be pretty long so i don't want to like you know put you through all that but i will show you like what it looks like in the end um and it's gonna for sure be tasty so i'm ready to eat <laughs> and there she is everybody miss america as you can see there's the seaweed kimchi I definitely had a scrambled egg so I used a bigger pan so I just scrambled it. Usually I do a fried egg, green onions, and then the actual ramen which is underneath. Now this has to cool obviously because this is way too hot but um that's it. That's a good that's a good ramen right there. Hello everyone. The year is 2022. It has officially been raining in LA for what feels like two weeks straight. The entire city of LA is the greenest I've ever seen it. We're officially out of our drought, which we've been in for decades. So needless to say, it's a, it's a, it's not a winter wonderland, it's a wetland wonderland. And honestly, I'm loving it, except last night it did thunder and lightning for I think the first time since I've lived here. It's a little crazy. That's why we have such good lighting right now because we've got overcast skies. So we're really thriving in the check-in department, but neither here nor there. We're not here to talk about the weather, of course. We're here to talk about how this vlog is going. Okay, so little check-in. I went to the bookstore. Barnes and Noble had none, none of the books that I went to go get. So I was like, I'm not gonna include this vlog footage. Why would I do that? Literally, it was a fail. So what I decided was this, I am, instead of buying the books, cause I am like trying not to buy as many books this year. I was like, let me see if they're available at the library or, you know, on Libby or on Scribd. Cause these are all services that obviously I use. The library and, and Libby are free. And then Scribd is just like a, a service that I use anyway. So I'm like, might as well if I pay for it. So let me see if I can find these books on there. And then if I can't, I will buy them. The point is I found the first book that I'm going to be talking about today, which is The Measure. It's the first book that I started, the one that Darian recommended me. And just to give you guys a little recap, I know you probably remember, but it is that like sci-fi book about kind of like these random brown boxes. And inside the boxes, there is essentially what I would call a string of fate. And that's the premise of this story. So that's the check-in. I'm on chapter eight. I started the audiobook for this one. And I will say that this audiobook is very engaging. It's very fun. And the story is told in multiple POVs. So you've got like one character, Nina, and then another character. I think his name is Ben. I think his name is Ben. It's either Ben or Charlie. I'm not sure. It's one of those. I might have made that up. Anyway, but so Nina is like an editor at, I think, I want to say a newspaper is what she is. Not me not even knowing any of the, the plots or the characters or anything. And then Ben slash Charlie, I don't know what he does yet. It's too early to tell. But essentially the beginning of it, like the first chapters that I've read so far, it's just everybody figuring out that they've got these boxes. And this is a pretty short book because I'm reading it on 1.5 speed, which is not even like as fast. Like I usually can do like two, but I like to start slow just to get into the groove of the book. You know, it might not be slow for some people, but so I'm reading it and it's only like seven and a half hours long, which is a little bit longer than like a Ruby Dixon book. So this book is pretty short. It's gonna be real quick. So my point with all that is I'm liking what I'm reading so far. It's very enjoyable. I'm engaged with the story and Nina already has like this really good quote where she was like, there's so much, I'm paraphrasing because I don't know off the top of my head, but she was like, um, there's so much information out there in the world. I could literally read like for the rest of my life and never be able to catch up. And I'm like, wow, I know you're talking about social media, Nina, but I'm going to put it into perspective of books. Like there's so many books out there. Like I could read every single minute of every single day for the rest of my life. And I would not be able to catch up with how many books there are in the ether, in the world. So anyway, my point with this is I'm liking it. Darian, I'm liking it. Let's see where the plot goes. I haven't really gotten to anything crazy yet because we're really just kind of getting the information because what I can tell so far, I don't want to tell y'all any spoilers or anything, but the setup is basically if you're 22, you get a box, okay? So anybody before 22, y'all don't know 
when you're gonna die and it's a string in a box it doesn't necessarily have like a date and time or a or a countdown yet from what i can see it's just like a string so if you've got a short string you die sooner than like people with long strings and so far people get in their boxes they're basically just going to the doctor to get checked out to you know see if they've got like an un uh, curable illness or like something like that so that's what's going on with that and I'm liking it that's what's going on so like I said it is a torrential downpour but of course like we can't just stop our lives because it is raining so I've got to go take a COVID test today because I am going to be working the rest of the week usually when I take COVID tests it's like near Stephanie from Stephanie Bookish's house so I always hit her up and I'm like yo do you want to go get a coffee or what do you want to do? So I think we're going to exchange some books because she's like into this romance reading era, which I'm so happy for her. And she's going to borrow a couple of my romance books. I'm going to borrow a couple fantasy books and we're going to get some coffee. So I don't know how cute that vlog footage would be. If I see an opportunity, I'll give it to y'all. But my point with that is I'm going to be listening to the audiobook up to her house which will be 30 minutes and then 30 minutes back so I think I'll get at least another hour in and I'll be able to kind of know what's going on in the house of commons yeah I'm still saying that quote that's the check-in that's the vibe I'm gonna shower classic clip honestly you guys know when you get these little things in the wash I don't know what they are they're like oil stains or something if anybody knows how to get that out of my clothes can you let me know because I love this sweatshirt and it's like blatantly apparent like if it was dark you might not be able to see it as well, but like it's blatantly apparent that that's a stain. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna go. Bye. Okay, buds. So I am officially checking in for The Measure, which was a recommendation by Darian. This book is so interesting to me. I don't know how it's gonna end. Probably sad, I'm thinking. That's really the only way I see this going because essentially you have these three POVs. One is from a long stringer, so someone who is not going to die anytime soon, supposedly. One is from a long stringer who is like acting as if he's a short stringer, which is chaotic enough. And the other one is a short stringer who just wants to live a normal life. You know what I mean? And doesn't didn't, didn't even really want to like look at his string. And then there's another POV where the person just won't even look at their box, right? They just don't even, they just wanna live. Okay, so the, the last two, they're pretty similar, um, but one just kind of knows their fate and the other one doesn't know yet. This is really interesting because it's giving books like um, Anxious People, where you have like a lot of people in the POVs and you're kind of seeing how all these people relate to each other. There's also The One by John Mars. That one, two is interesting not necessarily in like we get all these people who are necessarily overlapping with each other like they don't actually meet each other but they're all kind of going through a similar ish experience right because in that book you know you can basically like find out who you're destined to be with so it's kind of the same thing it's kind of like a destiny trope if you can even call it that my point here is this book is it's interesting it's very good I like the plot so far. The characters I like, but like I'm not in love with anybody. I'm pretty sure the one person I like is probably gonna die. So that's sad, but that's my update. I'm really liking it. And I think probably one of the most interesting parts so far that's happened is there is a, two sisters in this book. One of them is a long stringer. One of them, um, she's like not opening her box, right? The long stringer is like dating a short stringer, right? That she's been with for forever. Like this is like the love of her life. And her sister is like, why would you even think about getting married to this person? Like, why would you even do that? They're a short stringer. You're basically setting yourself up for heartache. And it's just that whole fight in that scene, that was so good. Like the one girl who had the long string, she really got her sister's ass. She was like, how can you be so judgmental right now? That's the love of my life. Like I'm going to go and like live my life as if like there were no strings and I never opened this box and you don't even know what your future is. So like you could be setting yourself up for heartache, but like you don't know because you haven't even opened your box. And I was like, wow, this is some drama. This is really good. It's just very interesting because there's also a political element to it because of course, government officials are using the strings to kind of control people. And it's, I think, I would say it's a parallel or like a metaphor to different things in our society now, right? Like maybe, maybe like poverty, racism, things that 
that divide people and it's really not in their control. So that's interesting to me. I'm really liking it. We'll see how it goes by the end of this book, but I'm really liking it so far. I'm going to be continuing on and reading this book today because I have like chores to do. As you can see, this mountain of laundry that you guys have politely not said anything about so far, but I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. I've gotta do some laundry. I've got to uh, clean the kitchen and do like some house cleaning, that kind of a thing. So I'm gonna be doing that today and listening to it because I'm actually listening to the measure on audio. So I'm gonna hopefully continue on. So I have an hour and eight minutes left. I'm on chapter 73 of 88. So I'm way over halfway. <laughs> That's hilarious. So hopefully I'll finish that today and I'll have a check-in for you tonight. But that's what I'm planning on doing for the rest of the day. I'm really excited because I'm actually really liking this book. So Darian, I really hope the end of this book is not sad. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so that's that one. And then the other book that I wanted to talk about, which actually got recommended by Basma, it is Thorn by Intisar Kanani. So the thing with this one is when I was looking it up, I didn't look at the imprint or anything. I actually did all that once I started reading it and I had kind of a moment where I was like, should I even read this book? Because this is a Harper. I think this is Harper. It's Epic Reads, but I think that's a Harper. Yeah, it's Harper Teen. And at first I was like, I don't know. Like maybe I should just ask Basma to get me another book. But then I was like, maybe this is a good time to talk about this because obviously if you guys are in the bookish community, you know that HarperCollins has not been paying their workers uh, fair livable wages. And essentially they've been on strike for over two months. They've accepted uh, meetings to talk at the table and possibly negotiate, but that's going on right now. So everyone who supports the workers of HarperCollins, like the work workers at Harper, they have not been buying or rating Harper books. So I decided I was just gonna get this one at the library. I wasn't gonna buy it. And I was just gonna see what the deal is, right? And I think if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just gonna link an article or two possibly down below so you guys can check that out. The whole point is you don't wanna buy from Harper. You don't really wanna support Harper until they pay their workers. So that being said, this is actually perfect because I started reading this book and I'm gonna be DNFing it. I'm gonna be DNFing it. And not like in a, wow, this is the worst book I've ever read kind of way. It's just not my taste. It's not my style, I don't think. This is a YA fantasy. I think it's a retelling of the Goose Girl, which essentially is, she switches places with somebody else who kind of like takes over her identity and then she kind of like, is able to live a pretty normal life. So I like the premise of this book and I like where it could possibly go. But the issue here for me is that the writing style is very traditional YA. And what I mean by that is like 2000s YA where, you know, you get a lot of description of what the young person is doing day to day, but not much is going into the plot. So what I mean by that is our main character basically switches places and becomes a servant at the castle. And so she is working in the stables and she's doing the stable life. Like she's out there living, you know, with the other servants, you know, eat, breaking bread, becoming friends. You know, she becomes friends with a magical horse who can talk, which is fine. I love magic. I love magical beings. That's great. But then some stuff goes down and it just doesn't really make sense. The logic of it is not in it for me. And I'm not really seeing much of the plot. I'm halfway through this book. I'm at page two, chapter 23, which is 250. Okay. Out of 495. So a little over halfway. And yeah, I'm just not seeing this plot go anywhere. We're halfway through. She basically is still at the stables. She's having like a couple of moments with I think someone who's supposed to be her love interest but I'm just not sure I'm not sure I'm not sure where the plot's going stuff keeps getting introduced there's like new things happening you know every now and then and I'm just kind of like I am not invested I, I'm not invested I, I'm not liking the writing style I'm pretty bored with it unfortunately um so I think I'm gonna end up DNFing it but because I just am not vibing with the book and I thought maybe this was like an older book like maybe this had come out many many years ago but I think it was published in 2020 so yeah I think it truly is just kind of the writing style is a little too young for me because for me like it's I I like to know about the characters lives I do but not when it's like the whole entire first half of the book you know what I mean like I need some more going on. I need more action. I need more something. So unfortunately I'm going to be DNFing Thorn. So that is going to put Bookstagram 
at a zero for this round and obviously is going to kick bookstagram out of the running for whoever wins this one ah, i love you basma it's not your fault it's me it's my taste it's all my issue i i do think if you are into the ya fantasy genre that is like very like you just like to see like the day-to-day -day of the main characters and that kind of a thing then that will be your cup of tea but really like not enough i think was going on for me okay Hopefully I wasn't too loop-de-loop -loop with that. Hopefully that was clear and concise. I am there, I'm there, I'm there. I am there with my check-ins. I'm gonna keep on with the measure, hopefully finish that by tonight, and then I'm gonna start my final book for this vlog, which is Son of the Star. Son of the Star, which I'm really excited about. I'm hoping that that book is really good. We'll see. Anyway, see you in a little. She would honor her promise. She would not fall apart. She would be the rock now for Willie and Midge. She would keep making plans for all three of them. And after about a year had passed, Nina and the children had managed to rebuild their lives together as a newfound trio, as a family. Aren't that book actually making me sob in the end? Wow. Ooh, wow. Okay, that was crazy. That ending was really crazy. It wasn't even crazy, it was exactly expected. It's exactly what I thought was gonna happen. But for like two seconds, I thought it was going to end without anyone going anywhere. You know what I mean? Oh, man. That was crazy. That little twist in the end was crazy. Okay, let's talk about, let's talk about this book really quick. We'll do a final little wrap up. I'm going to put you guys down. I'm going to put you guys down. So the thing, the thing <laughs> about this book what is the thing? Let me just think for a second. Okay, what did I want to say? What I wanted to say about this book is that it's not necessarily about the strings. Like it is about the strings, but it's not about like figuring out where the strings came from or like how they got there. It's very much like magical realism where like something magical has happened and everybody just kind of accepts it. And the book is about how they like live their lives. So it's very like about these couple of character stories how they're all kind of connected in casual ways and that's it it's literally just about people like people and i think the overall moral or like overall idea uh behind this story is just kind of like these strings determine you know when your life ends like they they they're not causing it but they're telling you when your life is going to end and of course you're born like you're in this world for a reason right so the beginning and the end of your life is guaranteed but what you do in between the lines, like in between the strings, right? As some could say, that is what you have power over. And that's what you have a chance to change and a chance to like live, you know, your life to the fullest, basically. And that I think was the whole point of this book. I think that was the whole point of this book. That and obviously to make us cry in the end because that was wild. I was so wild and I would just hate to be that one girl. I don't really want to give anything away. So I'm just talking so vaguely right now. But wow, what a what a nice book. Is it like my favorite book? I don't know. I have to think about that. Okay, the Call Powell rating on this one will be really interesting. Like when I sit down and actually do it. But yeah, it made me cry. It made me cry because that's just so sad. That was so sad. Oh my gosh. So the last book that I have in this reading vlog that I'm going to start today, once I get some time, is Son of the Storm. And this is the West African inspired adult fantasy that was recommended by Jenna from Jenna's Lit, Lit Picks. Basically, all I can surmise from what she said and kind of what I've read about the summary of the book is just that there is a guy who is like a soldier, I, I believe, and he kind of gets his blinders ripped off about the government and about the country that he like lives in and uh, essentially I think begins a fight for like, like actual freedom or like what's right basically with people. So I've said this before, but I really like stories like this where there's like a set of people who have to kind of like discover the bad things that are, um, are happening like in their like community, society, country, that kind of a thing. And they, they strive to like make it better. That's like a very like dumbed down version of what I think this book is about. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to start that tonight. I'm really, really excited. I think I'm going to like this one. And then I will give you guys my final ratings for all the books. Ah! And we'll see who won. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also nervous. Right, Sherm? Right. 
Anyway, we're doing a little vlog check-in. This is for Son of the Storm, my last book for this vlog. I am at, I think like 26%. This is a rough estimate because I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm at 26%. 26, you say? Why 26? Well, I just felt like I needed to check in because for the first 20% of this book, it was slower than freaking molasses, okay? Slower than freaking molasses coming out of those Vermont trees, those Canadian trees. Where's molasses come from? I don't know. Look at my cool bowls. I got my little influencer bowls. I'm excited for this, okay? I'm taking the stickers off these. So that's what I'm doing while I'm talking to you guys. But anyway, so... That, the vlog check-in is 26% maybe. That one came off really good. You know how annoying stickers are? Wow, like who do you think you are? Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. So the check-in is this book is really, really slow and it was giving me a lot of setting and world building, which is fine, but like I need more than that. I'm, I'm here to be a champion of good characters and good plot. You know what I mean? I'm all for setting, okay? Like, if we care about the characters and we care about the plot, I want to know everything about their world. Like, I want to know everything that's going on in their world. But until I care about those characters, until I care about what's going on in the plot, don't tell me the sex, like S-E-C-T-S, -E and the freaking cast systems and all the stuff that's going on. Because guess what? I'm not going to care. I'm not going to care. Okay, I'm not gonna care. So that was my issue with the first 20% of this book because it was just like dragging. It's basically in, I think it's four POVs. Let me think about that. It's Danso, Ishime, her mom Neme, or Nem, and then the other yellow face and possibly another one. So you've got a lot of POVs going on, which is fine, like it's enough. But also I need these characters to be like outstanding. Like I need everything to just be up a level. So anyway, something really crazy in the plot finally happened at around, it was like the 22%. I remember being like, yes, something's happening. And then it just kind of like got really flat again. So I'm waiting for something to happen, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty like medium about everything. Like the characters are all right. I really like what I really like so far as the magic system, because that has been revealed. And that is super interesting because essentially in this world, they have, this isn't a spoiler or anything, you, you literally find this out very soon, but they have these rocks that you can basically like gain the magic from, like you hold the rock and you like put it into yourself and then you can like do different things, right? So there's like one that can control fire, one that can control like the elements other than fire. Elements as in like can make inanimate objects like this knife, you know, do stuff, right? And then there's another one, I think, I wanna say there's like four, but one hasn't been revealed yet. So that one will probably be the actual plot twist or like the actual, you know, spoiler. But anyway, so that's pretty cool. I'm really liking that part of it. Like that part of the world building, really good, really good. So anyway, um, yeah, that's my check-in. I'll, I'll check in again. You know, if something happens, if something starts getting good, I'll let you guys know when that point is. But so far I'm pretty medium about it. It's only a fourth of the book in though, so that's what I got. What am I doing right now? I'm gonna make some dinner, glad you asked. So I basically had meal prepped already earlier this week and I've been seeing all these different cool salads. I know it sounds crazy, it sounds crazy. But I'm seeing all these really cool salads on Instagram, so I think I wanna try one. I don't know if it's today. I think it is today, I think I am. I'm just gonna put a bunch of random stuff in it, but maybe I'll give you guys a little sneak peek, let you see what it's gonna be. But this is my salad bowl. This is what I'm gonna be mixing the salad in. And then I'm gonna be serving everything in my cute little Instagram influencer bowls that I just keep seeing everywhere. Like this is what the food bloggers use, and I love it. Because I literally eat all my food out of a bowl that is like, almost as not quite as big as this but it's like a low bowl like this but this just is such a better like a plate bowl i don't even know what this is called it just says stoneware okay anyway made in china all right so that's it i'm a little kooky because i went to work today so i'm tired but i'm gonna make some dinner and continue with this book so catch you guys in a little bit I'm gonna be 
Again, I actually put makeup on for this because I feel, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a confessional, not me having the actual proof that I just put lip gloss on. <laughs> I feel like I'm at a confessional for Survivor or like Singles Inferno. Like I feel like I have to explain my actions here and I need to look at least somewhat decent. Even though, honestly, I feel like I look more tired with makeup on. We're not gonna get into that today. Today, we're gonna finally do our checkup and finish up this a checkup. <laughs> It's not that funny. I don't know why I just laughed at myself. Ah, I'm a little nervous, okay? So we're gonna do our check-in for the end of Son of the Storm and we're gonna find out who finally won this first round of Battle of the Books. Okay, so last time I talked to you guys, let me, let me put my coffee down, it's actually burning my hand. So last time I talked to you guys, I was essentially at the 25% mark of Son of the Storm. Since then, I have officially gotten to 68% of Son of the Storm, and I decided last night that I will be DNFing this book. Yeah, I'm gonna be DNFing this book. All right, so the reason I have makeup on today, my confessional, is because I feel like I need to explain myself. I can't believe I DNFed two books in this vlog. Um, which, you know, plot twist, that means that Darian officially won this round. <laughs> Darian, my girl, you did it! We'll get into the official call pile rating for the measure, but Darian did win this round. She won it for booktube. I'm really proud. I'm really happy for her. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and talk about the end of Son of the Storm. Okay. So, pretty much exactly what I told you guys in the first check-in for this book is kind of why I decided to finally DNF this. I was supposed to have this vlog done a while ago, like days and days ago, but it has taken me so long to even get a little bit into this book. I have really tried, I've really tried. And you guys know one of my goals this year is to DNF books that I'm not enjoying and I'm just not into. And unfortunately that ended up being Son of the Storm. This book, I mean, I think it has such great potential, but something just wasn't clicking for me. I don't know if it's because I thought the main character, like one of the main characters, I guess, Danso was really annoying. I, I don't know if I like wanted more from like the other characters. Like, I think I just got really bogged down with the story of, with the world building, with the setting. And it's so crazy because it's not like it's that hard to understand. Like, sure, there are words that are, you know, taking place of other words that we would probably use in like this realm and this world. But it wasn't like I was getting lost. Like, that wasn't the point. I think for me, it just was so much extra information that I just felt like I didn't need. And that's really the reason why this is a big DNF for me. We did get into the character POVs, but I think... There were just maybe too many POVs because <laughs> we would get into a character's POV and it would be fun and I'd be like, let's stay here. We don't have to go anywhere else. And then we go into another character POV and then another character POV. And then chapters later, a new character POV would be introduced. And for me, like, it's fine to do that as long as all of those POVs are serving a purpose. I just felt like a lot of the times when we would go into these like almost like side character POVs, a lot of the, like, what do I, how do I say this? Like the value of the chapter, like the meaning of the chapter, like wasn't there. Like there was really no point. It's kind of something that I had already picked up on that I didn't need to be handheld with like through the story. And if you guys have watched vlogs with me before, I'm pretty harsh on fantasy books. Like I don't know what my problem is, but I'm very harsh on fantasy, I guess because I read so much of it that like I just don't have time to read stuff that I'm not into. And so 
for me, I don't like my hand to be held. Now, granted, I don't want to be lost throughout the whole entire book, but I didn't feel like this was the type of book that you could really get lost in. And I mean, as in, as far as like the words and, and phrasing and the world building and stuff like that, like that was very easy to keep up with. And I didn't have an issue with that. Okay. So hopefully I'm not going in circles. I hope you guys kind of understand the major reason for the DNF. I think also if you guys are keeping up with our channel, you know that I'm very big into plot and very big into characters. The reason why I say this book had so much potential is because the plot had so much potential. I love the magic system in this book. Like I think it's so interesting and I think it would be so cool to see it like go forward. But the issue is I can't get through this internal monologue of these characters that I don't care about. And also the characters that I do care about, they're giving me so much in every chapter. It's just like so much information that like, I need, I need the plot to build, you know what I mean? Like it's great to like know how the characters are feeling about like certain things, but I don't need like pages and pages and pages of that because it just kind of seems like it's going around in a circle. So yeah, I hope that that makes sense. And I hope I didn't make anybody feel bad. If you guys like this book, I love that for you. I'm so happy. I'm just super picky and that's my issue. It's no surprise to me that the two books that I did DNF from this vlog are fantasy books because like I said, I'm very picky with my fantasy. I still love you guys, I promise. It's me, I'm the drama, I'm the problem. So in recap for this vlog, of course I DNF'd two books and ended up finishing one. The first book that I DNF'd was Thorn, which was a recommendation by my friend Basma. Basma, I love you. Thank you so much for this recommendation and for playing this game. I promise it's not you, it's me. And of course, my second DNF was Son of the Storm, which of course was our recommendation from Jenna. I also promise it's not you, Jenna. It is me. I am the problem. It's me. But yeah, so I do just want to say it's not their issue. It is my issue. And hopefully I didn't step on any toes with those DNFs. But I will talk about the one book that I did finish and the one that I actually really liked from this vlog, The Measure. So Darian recommended this book and I'm... I'm pretty sure if I had to guess, Darian probably also cried. You guys saw me in the vlog footage, like the end of that book just really hit home. And that's not necessarily gonna give it like a full five star rating, but it definitely got those emotional levels that I really enjoy in books that are centered around characters. Now, like I said before, this is obviously not a sci-fi where you're finding out what the strings represent. And I don't even, I don't know if it would be a sci-fi or a fantasy. Like we don't even know where these strings came from. Maybe it's magical, realism where like this obviously magical thing has happened and people just accept it. So that would be a fantasy. But the book is more about the characters and kind of like where their lives take them in the time between the beginning and end of their strings. I really liked that. I thought it was such a creative way to kind of do a string of fate book. And while it was sad in the end, I, I just like really liked it. I liked the characters. I thought it was a good time. So I'm going to go ahead and do the call pile for this one and let you guys know what the final rating is. Okay. So with the call pile, it ended up being a 7.22 with the highest part of this book being the logic and the relationships that got a full 10 out of 10. And the lowest scoring item, I guess, was a seven, which was for both atmosphere and intrigue of this book. Overall, it got a really, really high level rating, I would say. Like characters got an eight, the writing got an eight, the plot got an eight, and the enjoyment got a nine. So I think probably the reason why Logic gets the highest score out of this entire rating is because like the plot twist of this book, as well as kind of how all the relationships of the characters coexist and, and also kind of go together in this book. I loved how it was intertwined. Like that was so good. I loved how everything was revealed in the end. And though we don't actually get to know where the strings come from, that I don't think as part of the logic of this book because that's not really the point of this book. The relationships in this book were also really, really good too. That obviously is the reason why like in the vlog, I said the fight between the two sisters was so, so good. Like that was such good drama. It's because they cared about each other and I cared about them and like wanted to know what was gonna happen with them. And then obviously me crying at the end. <laughs> 
Like, if I didn't care about the characters, why would I have cried? So obviously that's gonna get a 10 out of 10. So a 7.2 ends up being a four stars. Four stars flat, not a 4.5, not a 3.5. And that feels really, really good for me for this book. Like, I think I even said in a part of the vlog, like, is this my favorite book? Like, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that. I'm gonna have to think about that. I think if it is a book that I'm excited about and it is like my favorite book of all time, then I'm about it immediately. I'm just like, wow. Wow, the end of that was so crazy. With this one, I think for a lot of it, it was very like, I was intrigued enough to keep going and wanted to know about the characters, which is why intrigue was like a seven, you know, it wasn't like super high, but also wasn't super low. And then at the end, it's like we went full speed ahead, which is what brought it up to a four stars. That was a really freaking good book. I highly recommend for people who are character driven readers and they kind of almost want like characters that kind of think about the reason why we're here on earth, but not like in a super deep, like you're gonna freak out if you think about it too much kind of level, but just kind of like characters that think, you know, characters that wanna experience life. I really think that if you're that kind of a reader, you'll enjoy this book. And yeah, it was really freaking good. So obviously the other two books that I DNF'd are not gonna be getting star ratings today. So without further ado, we already we already said it before, but Darian, you are the winner. You are the strongest recommender of this first episode. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone who put in recommendations for this. Not just Darian, but also Basma and Jenna as well. Like it takes a lot to put your recommendations out there. Like I would know, I've told you guys, I get nervous recommending books to people because I know that I'm not the best at it. So so I just want to thank you guys for doing this for me and thank you so 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 much for sending me your videos like that was so nice you didn't have to do that and I'm just so glad that you guys made this a really great first episode of Battle of the Books. So officially booktube is on the board with one point. Let's see who ends up making another point or possibly their first point in episode number two. If you guys are interested in this series it will be happening once a month until the end of the year and then we'll be able to see who who is the best social media? Who is the best platform? There you go. Who's the best platform that can recommend books? So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this episode, even though we had a couple DNF. I'm not gonna promise that I won't DNF in every video, but hopefully we do end up getting through three books in the next episode, and I'm so excited for you guys to see it. So make sure you guys subscribe so you know when these videos are coming out. Hit that notification bell if you don't wanna miss another video from us, and make sure to like and comment, because I would love to know if you guys love this new series, or if you're like, trash it, Christine. You don't need to be reading books. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye!